Welcome to my narrated step-by-step -step tutorial for Lobster Shack version 3, Local Color. The photograph on the right has been the reference and inspiration for all three versions of my painting Lobster Shack. This is the version with local color. I begin with the same simple sketch using a 2B pencil that I used in my other uh, versions of this painting. And I'm going to begin by placing a middle valued uh, wash on the side of some of these building structures. For this version of the painting I'm working more with local color so I'm painting the the bluish gray building bluish gray and the, the trees green and uh, uh, more closely reflecting the actual colors that are appearing in the photograph. That being said, I'm still working with a somewhat muted palette. I'm not using bold, bright colors for this painting, but they are tailored more towards the uh, colors that, uh, that appear uh, on these structures in the photograph, which are kind of a gray, bluish gray, and warm gray tone. And you can see by looking at the colors in this photograph that they're not bold, bright colors, even though I'm painting local color. They, they are, as I said, they're somewhat uh, neutral tones. The colors that I'm working with here are a uh, cerulean blue and a color that uh, is called Halloween orange, uh, but you could use another orange with that. And it gives me this kind of warm, cool, neutral that I'm working with. As I'm applying this paint, I'm uh, approaching it just as I did in the previous two versions where I'm taking a middle value and I'm painting the shadowed sides of these buildings. One of the things I've noticed when painting local color is I think there's a greater tendency to want to start painting objects and shift the focus away from shape making and composition and design. Just the nature of the fact that we're trying to give a closer representation to colors in a photograph starts to influence our decision making and can shift your focus away from composition and design to just trying to paint the elements in, in the subject matters and paint a, a blue house or a white boat or a green tree and not and, and you start to not think about it so much as a shape and values and uh, that, that's just something you want to be aware of. You don't want to shift your focus away from good design just because you're trying to give a closer representation to what's going on in your photograph. This is the third version of this painting and what I want to point out is just because I've changed my color scheme doesn't mean I've changed my painting process or my approach to the painting. As you can see as I insert clips from the other two versions of this being painted that all these paintings are developing in a similar manner. I haven't changed my thought process at all just because I've changed my color scheme. Another interesting thing that I noted was that the time to accomplish each one of these paintings was very similar. In fact, the range uh, in time to complete these ranged from 32 minutes to 36 minutes. And I know that because I have the raw data from filming that shows me exactly how much time I spent on each. I'm going to begin to paint this tree line back here. And I'm starting with a mixture of royal blue and sap green, which gives me a bit of a cool middle value green that I'm applying. And then I'm going to take some of that same sap green mixed with a little bit of cad yellow light. And it's going to warm it up some and brighten it up a little bit. And I'm just working uh, with one wet wash into another wet wash and letting those colors merge. So I haven't used any masking fluid in any of these paintings that I've done for this series. I very well could have if I wanted to uh, mask out the shape of the pole or the lines or, or some of those things, but uh, sometimes I'll, I'll use it, sometimes I won't. It just depends on how I feel about the the, the painting I'm doing and what the most efficient way to approach it is. A lot of times I just do uh, negative painting around the object. 
So I've carried this tone all the way on the other side of this other, this back building structure. And I'm giving just the suggestion of trees. I'm not painting, uh, trying to paint a bunch of individual trees. I'm painting it as a one unit, as, a, as one shape. So I continue that, that cool tone across the page there and I work in some of the, the brighter mixture that I have with a little uh, cad light, cad yellow light in there. And I'm going to take that color right down uh, along the edge of that building structure. Now I'm going to warm that tone up a little bit by adding uh, a little pyro red to sap green. And uh, I'm going to take it down into the foreground and give the indication there of some greenery uh, around the rocks. I'm going to bring in a fine mist spray here and I'm just going to hit that paint that I just applied and let it uh, kind of diffuse down the page a little bit. And I'm going to bring in now, this is quinacrid and gold, so it's getting much warmer as it gets closer to the foreground here. And again I've hit that with the fine mist spray to diffuse that color a bit. And you can see how, how much drier, how lighter that dries. I'm starting to paint some of this dark value that's underneath the, uh, the building structure here, uh, where it's supported by the, the, the wooden pillars. And it's a very dark value. And it's actually, I'm coming in probably a little too dark at this point in my painting. If you were to go back to the other two paintings at this point, I was coming in with uh, a wash that was uh, probably more middle value than this is, which is a this is a very dark value. So it's it's a little too dark too early probably. But I'm going to continue on, and this is where I think uh, local color has a tendency to take over. I, I always try and work from large to small light to dark and when I'm working with just colors or limited palette I'm just thinking more values and building my values and when I get the local color as I said there's a tendency to want to start painting the photograph and I, I here I'm starting to paint it more as I see it and not thinking about building my values and, and eventually working my shape so this is pro like I said this is probably a little too dark too fast but it's, it's really not that big a deal. And I'm going to soften those edges with this spray and uh, diffuse that color a little bit down the page. Here I've inserted the photo and you can see how dark that is underneath that building. I've, I've gone right to that with my first application of paint in that area, which is not how I normally uh, would approach this. So um, that's one of the things you just have to be careful of when you're working with local color and trying to represent a photograph. Uh, it, it can change your approach if you let it. Now I have my quill brush that I, that I like to use for making uh, more detailed brush marks and I'm placing some of these darker values in here. And that color mixture that I use on the underside of the buildings as a dark value is 90% sepia with just a touch of some royal blue in it. I'm continuing with some of these uh, more detailed marks, uh, trying to bring out the, the window shapes. And you can see that when I paint these, I try to not just paint a bunch of squares. I try to break them up with some... Uh, varieties in the shapes and the brush marks that I'm making in those window areas. Same thing here, I'm not trying to paint just rectangles, I, I'm painting a series of little marks in most instances just to give the suggestion of windows.
Here I'm just trying to uh, make some interesting brush marks here and I'm going to diffuse those down a little bit just to give the indication of the water and the reflections in the water. But I, I still try to keep it so that it's somewhat undefined. I often use my dark valued uh, shapes that I that I make to help define edges and help send areas back and bring other areas forward and it pays, plays an important part in composition and the mood though for the painting is often set in the middle value range that's where a lot of the the, the soft and lost edges happen that's where the nice gradation of color occurs and it kind of sets the mood for the painting so they're very important so are the lights and the whites uh, the, the whole value range is uh, very important but they they seem at times to play uh, different roles in the composition here I'm taking a darker value and I'm just giving the indication of uh, some of the ripples in the water I'm going to continue putting uh, some dark value marks in, in a few different areas in my painting here just to reinforce some of the, the shape and some of the structure. I'm going to give the indication of the underside of this roof line on this back building. I want to bring a wash of a uh, blue tone into the sky so I'm using a combination of cerulean blue and Halloween orange and uh, just giving some indication of clouds in the sky and then I'm going to soften that up a little bit with a with a spray I also want to take some of this blue and carry it down into uh, the water just to give some indication that uh, there's some reflection of what's going on in the sky there. So not a lot, just uh, just enough to give the indication of carrying that, that color down into the composition. So I just put some touches of that color down and I'm going to hit it with the, the fine mist spray to diffuse that uh, down the page as I have done with some of the other colors and it helps give some unity to what's going on in the painting. Give it a little, uh, a little more definition to this building in the distance and I want to uh, give the indication of this line coming down from this pole. And just highlight a couple more areas there with a dark value. I'm going to uh, put another layer in this tree line by putting a dark value uh, line of trees here behind these buildings which will help bring them forward and it'll create a little bit more depth in the composition I'll have this uh, stronger darker value line of trees here uh, right behind the buildings and then going back that the the tree line seems more distant as it's a softer cooler lighter tone uh, behind these trees so it helps build some depth into the painting I'll continue taking this dark value down the tree line here. And this is still whole, uh, done in a way where it's just more one shape, not individual trees that I'm painting. I'm going to take that to the right side of this building a little bit. And just again give, give the indication here of a, 
another layer of that tree line that came behind that building and just continued on. I'm going to go ahead and put some graphics here on this sign and I'm going to spell out the, the word lobster as in a photo and I'm using a, a deep red tone. It's hard to pick up I think in the video but it's a deep red tone similar to the photograph but I still paint it in a manner that's consistent with how the rest of the painting's been done. I don't do it like I'm writing it with a ballpoint pen. I have breaks in the letters and uh, inconsistencies so that it's uh, unified with the rest of the painting. There's an area here that's bothering me a little bit, so I'm gonna just put just a couple brush marks right here, give the indication of a pylon coming down, and give a little support to that corner of that building. And that completes my version three of Lobster Shack using local color. In this image you can see the reference photo and the three versions of the painting which I've done. Top right is the limited palette, the bottom left is the expressive color, and the bottom right is the local color. So I took the same approach with all three paintings. My thought process is very similar. I just worked in a different color scheme. I hope you've enjoyed watching these three paintings come together and I hope I've been able to illustrate that there's many different ways you can approach a given subject matter whether it's a photograph or in real life. In this instance I changed the color scheme that I was using. There, I could also have done a completely different value study and value structure. I could focus on textural quality somewhere. I can change my center of interest. There are so many different ways to approach one subject and we sometimes limit ourselves to trying to paint photographs or paint local color, but there's so many other options out there. Don't forget to check out Rick Sorbet's Watercolor Friends and Subscribers on Facebook. And if you have questions about my materials, you can always check out the studio page on my website, rsorbetsart.com. If you have specific questions, you can email me at contactrsorbetsart at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.